um, okay, so our second reading this week, if you've ever been to a wedding, you have probably heard this passage of scripture, even if um, you've never heard anything else from the Bible. Somehow people have heard this. Um, and it's uh, a, an awesome chapter that Paul writes to the church at Corinth, dealing with love and all things having to do with love. Now, love is a tricky word when we think of it in English because we only have one word. But in the language that Paul was talking in or writing in is Greek, and the Greeks have four words that all are translated as love. Um, so we'll go through them because um, while we do read it at weddings, it's not necessarily talking about romantic love. And in fact, the reason why Paul is talking about this is because the church that he's writing to, the church at Corinth, is kind of having a little fight amongst themselves. So um, he talks about the thing that they're fighting about in chapter 12, and then he starts chapter 13 um, with... Um, if I speak with human or angelic tongues but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Um, basically saying, like, you can be as good as you want to be at all of the things that the church can offer, all the spiritual gifts that we can have, but if you don't do them with love, it's just noise. Um, and so he really challenges people to, um, to love one another and to really kind of delve deep into what that means. So as I mentioned before, um, the Greeks had four words for love. Um, and um, they kind of give this a panoramic experience of what love looks like. So here are the four um, words. So first of all, there's eros, um, which is like the word that we talk about, like um, romantic love or um, really like physical love. Um, that's not what Paul's talking about here. Um, Philea, which is where we get like Philadelphia, um, the city of brotherly love. Um, it's Philea is brotherly love. Um, like a love between, um, not necessarily brothers, but friends. It's like a friendship kind of love. Um, Storhe is the love, it's like a family love, the way that you love your mom or the way that you love your dad or your brother, or your sister, um, those types of things. That's what that word is. Um, and lastly, the word agape. Agape is the Greek word for the love of God and the way that we love God and the way that he loves us. Um, in it, we, in chapter 13, it's a very short chapter, but in chapter 13, what we see is a picture of God, of agape, godly love. Um, and so it's really neat. So actually, if you'll look and see um, what the characteristics are, we can say um, that we can understand more about God himself through this chapter, and we can also understand more about the way that God wants us to interact with people um, through this chapter. Okay, so genuine love. Let's talk about this before we move on. Genuine love is not like... Um, it implies a sacrifice. If I love somebody, then that means that I'm giving something up for them um, or I'm willing to give something up for them. So for instance, we can know um, that, uh, like guys, if you've ever been in a relationship with a girl, you'll sacrifice what movie you wanna go see because you love this girl and you'll be willing to go see something horrible and awful like um, a, a cheesy romantic comedy, not because you love the movie, but because you love the girl. You're willing to sacrifice and give up something for her. Ladies, the same thing. You may not want to watch the game or you may not want to go to, um, speaking of movie, you may not wanna to go to like an action movie and yet um, in your love for the guy, you'll tolerate and you'll put up and you'll sacrifice what you want for them. Love is a sacrifice um, inherently. If there's no sacrifice, there's no love. Um, so love is learning to say and mean certain words. If love is patient, like this passage says, then that means that you say, I can wait, you go first. If love is kind, then we teach ourselves to confess to one another. Um, if love is... Um, knows no boasting or pride, then we do not ever say, I told you so. Um, if love isn't easily angered, then we develop the discipline to say nothing, even when we want to retaliate, we want to say something back, and we have the exact thing that we could say to make it totally perfect. We don't. Um, the next part of 1 Corinthians, he says that love keeps no records of wrongs. Well, okay, we like that part, but that also implies that love keeps no records of rights. Um, so those times when you're right and you just want to like cram it in somebody's face, you don't do it if you love them. Um, and then it says love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Um, always. 
that means that like not sometimes, not once in a while, not when it wants to, but always. Those things are hard to do. That means that there's perseverance in love. Love is not easy. Um, and so often in our culture, people say that they've fallen out of love. Um, well, then they're not, that's not love. Love is that sacrifice and love inherently um, gives, uh, it perseveres. So um, if somebody really, they stick through even in the good times and the bad times, um, even if the bad times outweigh the good times, um, that's love. And that's the kind of love that God has for us. He never abandons us. He always perseveres, always, um, always trusts. Um, th that's the way that God's love works with us. That's a picture of agape love. And that's the kind of love that we should have for God and also the kind of love that we should try to have for one another. And that's 1 Corinthians 13.